hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Golden Blooded is a college football YouTube channel for entertainment. So make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And let's get into our next college football video. Just in case you're wondering, no, this is not a gimmick. That is how cold it is in here. We do have the heat on, but it just can't keep up with just how cold it is outside. We are in the single digits as far as temperature goes in the outside. So the heat is working, but it's just making it cold. Instead of it being freezing like it is outside, it's just cold in here. That's why I'm wearing extra layers. So it's not a gimmick. This is just how cold it is in my house right now. And today I want to talk about teams that could possibly have a big bounce back year next year. And I know, I know, it's early in the season. Signing day just happened. There's going to be a lot of transfer portal in action. So this list could change. And it'll probably change again right before the season starts. But there's a few teams out there that I'm keeping my eyes on that I'm like, eh, they didn't do too good this year. But I think they could have a major bounce back year next year. And the teams that I nailed last year as far as predicting them to have a bounce back year. Oregon state i told everybody that oregon state was going to be a much better team that they were going to be competitive in the pac-12 and that they were going to be a big time spoiler in the pac-12 i knew oregon state was going to be a good team i also nailed usc but who didn't everybody was expecting usc to hit a bounce back here last year washington not a lot of people were talking about Washington. I loved that pickup in the transfer portal by Michael Penix Jr. to Washington. That was a big-time pickup. And I predicted Washington to possibly have a 10-win season. Nailed that one. South Carolina. I kind of over-predicted for South Carolina. I told everybody that they were going to have a much better year than what they were going to have last year. Possibly a 10-win season. That didn't happen, but South Carolina did have a bounce back year and ended the season by beating Tennessee and Clemson. So I'm going to count it. That prediction held true. I also said Florida State was going to be a much better team this year, and that's exactly what happened. Penn State, I predicted that Penn State was going to have a 10-win season this year. I knew James Franklin is a good head coach still, and they have a lot of talent over there at Penn State. And plus, their schedule was pretty easy, so a 10-win prediction wasn't all that difficult, but not a lot of people were predicting it for whatever reason. I also said Purdue can make a run for the Big Ten West. That's exactly what they did. North Carolina having a bounce back year. I know that was fairly predictable, but not everybody was predicting that. I also said look out for LSU and the SEC West. I didn't predict them to straight up win the SEC West. I still thought Alabama was going to do that. But I knew LSU was going to be a factor in the SEC West. And then finally Kansas State. I knew that Kansas State was going to be a dark horse in the Big 12. They were my dark horse to win the Big 12. And yes, that's exactly what happened. They won the whole daggum thing. But there was one big miss. One big miss. And that was TCU. I thought TCU was going to be a seller dweller in the Big 12. I thought they were going to have an identity crisis. I wasn't impressed by what Sonny Dykes has done up to that point before he was the head coach at TCU. So I failed that one miserably. But that's not bad considering all the teams that I hit. So these are the teams that I'm looking at for 2023 to possibly have a bounce back year or maybe even a magical year in 2023. And we'll go converse by converse, even division by division. How about that? First up, the SEC East. I think people need to look out for Missouri. I think Missouri is better than people realize. They finished 6-6. Six and six. They were kind of flying under the radar. They upset some teams this year, beat some teams that people were like, how did they beat them? And gave Georgia a scare. And Missouri has done very, very well in the transfer portal as far as the offensive side of the ball. So I think their offense will be much better next year. And I think their defense will improve on what they did this year. And you have to look at their schedule as well. They get FCS South Dakota, Middle Tennessee, Kansas State, but at home. Memphis and St. Louis at Vanderbilt, LSU at Kentucky, South Carolina at Georgia, Tennessee, Florida at Arkansas. So if you look at their road slate, it's not that difficult. At Vanderbilt, at Kentucky could be tricky at Georgia that's going to be a loss duh and then Arkansas that is doable so I think the bottom for Missouri in 2023 is the same record that they had this year six and six and I think their top could be eight and four maybe even nine and three depending on those last three games of the year Tennessee at home Florida at home and at Arkansas so yes I do expect Missouri to be a much better team in 2023 and they could finish as high as second in the SEC East what about the SEC West this one might surprise you Texas A&M yeah they finished five and seven and I have been dominant 
dogging them in the offseason. But the bottom line is, Texas A&M still has plenty of talent. They do have to figure out that quarterback position. I don't know why Jimbo Fisher can't do it. He's an offensive guy. He's been a quarterback guru. Why hasn't it come together for him? I have a feeling that it's still going to happen. And this could be the year. Look at their schedule. New Mexico at Miami Hurricanes. U.M. Monroe, Auburn, Arkansas and Arlington, Alabama at Tennessee, South Carolina at Ole Miss, Mississippi State, FCS, Abilene Christian and at LSU. So if you look at their road slate at the Hurricanes, at Tennessee, at Ole Miss and at LSU, that's not terrible. It's not horrific. In fact, I do think that they could go on the road and beat Ole Miss. Having said that, I do think that the bottom could be 5 and 7 again. I mean, they screwed it up this year. They could screw it up next year. But I think Texas A&M could be a 10-win team next year. That's right. I think Texas A&M is very capable of going 10-2 and in 2023. And I know you're probably laughing at me right now, but you're probably the same people that laughed at me for the bounce-back predictions that I made last year that hit in 2022. All right, on to the Big 12. Who's going to be the big bounce-back team? This might actually be a no-brainer, so it might be a common pick, but I'm going to go with it. Oklahoma. Oklahoma went 6-6 six and six this year. They had a great recruiting class. And they are getting playmakers in the offense, including Austin Stogner, who left to go to USC. And I'm talking about South Carolina, not Southern Cal. Now he's coming back to Oklahoma, and they're getting Theo East. So Oklahoma is going to have a potent offense next year. And let's look at their schedule. Arkansas State, SMU at Tulsa, Texas and Dallas, at BYU, Texas Tech, TCU at Kansas, Cincinnati at Kansas State, Iowa State, and at Oklahoma State. Look at that road slate. That is not bad at all. At Tulsa, at BYU, that could be tricky. But then at Kansas, at Kansas State, at Oklahoma. Oklahoma State, that is very, very doable. So I think that the bottom for Oklahoma next year, 8-4. and four. That's automatically an improvement from 6-6. Six and six. What about the ceiling for Oklahoma? I think they could go 11-1. and one. They might slip up somewhere, but I think they're going to be a good football team, and they are capable of going 11-1 and one and winning the Big 12. I'm sticking to that. On to the ACC. I know the ACC isn't doing divisions this year, but just for argument's sake, I'm going to go divisions, all right? So first, the Atlantic Division. I think Georgia Tech's going to have a bounce back. Year. I actually think they had a better year than people thought they were going to have this year, going 5-7. and seven. But that was with the tough schedule, and I think their schedule is going to be much, much easier, and the ACC will actually be weaker as a whole in 2023. Here's what their schedule looks like. They get Louisville in a neutral site game, but it is in Atlanta, which is where Georgia Tech is, at Ole Miss, Bowling Green, at Clemson, North Carolina, at Miami Hurricanes, at Virginia, Boston College, Syracuse, and at Wake Forest, and finally, the rivalry game against Georgia. I think the bottom for Georgia Tech is the same exact record as they had this year, 5-7, and seven, but I think they could be as good as 8-4. and four. Look for Georgia Tech to take a small step forward in 2023. And excuse me, that was the Coastal Division, so sorry about that. Coastal Division. Now let's talk about the Atlantic Division. Now I think Louisville is poised to take a step forward in 2023. Could Louisville pull a TCU? And Louisville's not in as bad shape as what TCU was when Gary Patterson was fired from TCU, so they're even in a better position than TCU was. So Scott Satterfield left Louisville for Cincinnati and Louisville's breathing a sigh of relief. We don't have to worry about that buyout. In comes Jeff Brom from Purdue. I think that was a decent hire. Here's what their schedule looks like. You get Georgia Tech in Atlanta. Just talked about that. FCS Murray State, Indiana in Indianapolis. Boston College, Notre Dame at home. Virginia at NC State. Duke, Virginia Tech at Miami Hurricanes at Pitt in Kentucky. Notice the schedules for Georgia Tech and Louisville look a little bit strange and that's because no divisions in the ACC. So teams that Georgia Tech usually play like Duke, Pitt, Virginia Tech, they won't be playing. And then for Louisville, teams like Syracuse, Wake Forest, Florida State, and Clemson, they won't be playing in 2023. And that actually helps Louisville's chances of having a better year. I think the bottom for Louisville is 7-5. That's about the same as this year. But I think the top for Louisville, they could be a 10-win team in 2023. I have confidence in that. Jumping over to the Big Ten, they are sticking with divisions at least one more year. First up, the Big Ten East. I do think Michigan State bounces back from a 5-7. and seven. This is just a gut feeling. I don't really have any thing to go on as far as actual, you know, recruiting status, transfer portal status. This is just a gut feeling. Here's what the schedule looks like. Central Michigan, FCS Richmond, Washington, Maryland, at Iowa, at Rutgers, Michigan, at Minnesota, Nebraska, at Ohio State, at Indiana, and Penn State. So if you look at the road games, not a bad road slate. At Rutgers, at Minnesota, at Ohio State, at Iowa, at Indiana. So two tough road games, but other than that, not that bad. So I think the bottom for Michigan State is still a little bit better than this year, going 6-6. Six and six. They could have a 10-win season. Season, but I'm going with 9-3. and three. I think Michigan State could be a 9-3 and three team in 2023. Finally, the Big Ten West. Yes, I'm going with Nebraska, who finished 4-8. No, I didn't pick them to have a bounce back here last year. I didn't fall for it again. 
But I do think Matt Rule has a lot of talent over there in Nebraska. They did great in recruiting for 2023 in his first recruiting class for Nebraska. And I think Matt Rule will have this offense ready and they will actually be able to score points. Schedule doesn't look all that bad at Minnesota, at Colorado. Now that's a tough way to start off the season, but then after that, Northern Illinois, Louisiana Tech, Michigan at Illinois, Northwestern Purdue at Michigan State, Maryland at Wisconsin, and Iowa. So that could be a tricky start to the season at Minnesota, at Colorado, but if they can at least split those first two road games, I think Nebraska is in for a really good season. Now the bottom for Nebraska is still 5-7. and seven. That's not good. That's one game better than what they were this year, but I think they could be as good as 9-3. and three. I really like how that schedule sets up after those first two games. And then finally the Pac-12. What team am I picking to be massively better than what they were last year? Of course, Colorado. They were bottom of the barrel, in the ditch bad. Historically bad, going 1-11. and 11. Deion Sanders was a splash higher, and Deion Sanders is getting actual competent football players at Colorado. They weren't just bad last year. They looked like a high school football team. Here's what their schedule looks like. At TCU, Nebraska, Colorado State, at Arizona State, Arizona, Oregon State, Stanford, USC, at Oregon, at UCLA, at Utah, at Washington State. So that's not their actual schedule as far as the dates go. The dates are still to be determined, but at least we know their home games and their away games. And the only thing that's keeping me from picking Colorado to have more wins is that tough road slate. It is very, very tough at Oregon, at UCLA, at Utah, at Washington State. That's a tough road slate. So I think bottom of the barrel for Colorado would be 4-8. and eight. That's not a good year, but it's still better than 1-11, and 11, and they'll actually be competing on the football field. What's their ceiling? 8-4. and four. I just don't like those road games at Oregon, at UCLA, at Utah, at Washington State. I think all four of those are losses, but I think the rest of these games are doable. And I know that's a tough road trip to start the year at TCU, but TCU loses a ton of production next year, and it's at the beginning of the year. That road game is winnable. But even if they lose that road game, 7-5, Come on, that's a miracle over there at Boulder. I think Deion Sanders will work miracles at Colorado. So y'all let me know in the comments section what you think about my bounce back teams for 2023. Which ones do you agree with and which ones do you disagree with? And who do you think will bounce back in 2023? That's all I got for for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.